the Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Johnson's new glow coat is water repellent. I'll repeat that. Johnson's new self-polishing glow coat is positively water repellent. That's important to you. Here's why. Do you ever spill water on your kitchen floor? What happens when you wipe it up? Does your wax polish disappear? Does it turn dull or milky white the minute water touches it? If so, you're not getting your money's worth in the floor wax you're using. Your floors need a change. Now here's what to do. Tomorrow, get a can of Johnson's new glow coat. Put it on your floors in the usual way. You'll find that glow coat is positively water repellent. You can whisk up, spill things without leaving a mark. And that lovely wax shine remains even after repeated damp moppings. Isn't that what you want in a floor wax? Well, then, don't ever use any self-polishing floor wax except Johnson's Glow Coat. For this tough, long-lasting water repellency is an exclusive quality found only in Johnson's new Glow Coat. And remember, the new Glow Coat is in the regular Glow Coat package. The container looks the same outside, but there's a wonderful difference inside. Try it and see. Have you ever noticed when you are driving home in your car how different sounds create different moods? The purr of a good motor, for instance, is a happy sound. The rattle of a loose fender is an annoying sound. But the saddest sound in the world is when you're just pulling into your driveway and a tire goes... Yep, it's Fibber McGee and Molly. Gone the luck anyhow, a flat tire. Right in our own driveway. Well, I can't think of a better driveway to have it in. Look at that thing. Flatter than the day before payday. Oh, dear. Doggone it, that's a new tube, too, Molly. I just bought that tube yesterday at Kramer's Drugstore. For a buck nineteen. A dollar nineteen? Yeah. Isn't that pretty cheap for an inner tube? Yeah, too cheap, I guess. I should have known better when he gave me that free box of tire patches with it. <laughs> I wouldn't have bought the tube, though, even at that, only Kramer says it's unconditionally guaranteed... Good. ...against everything but blowouts and punctures. <laughs> uh, no use beefing about it now. The only thing is to do is fix it. Let me get my tools out of the trunk, there. You know, it's pretty cold to be working out here, dearie. Why don't you call the garage and have them do it? Oh, it won't take long to yank this tire off, Tootsie. I'll take the tube in the house to patch it when I get it off. And... Ah, here's my jack. I'll get that tire off of there before you... Hello there, kids. Hi, daughter. Hi, Johnny. Well, hello there, Mr. Oldtimer. Hey, Johnny, you know something? Your tire's flat. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. I hadn't noticed. I can sympathize with you, son. I've been having a bad time with my motorcycle lately myself. <laughs> you have? What gives you trouble, the tires or the motor? The payments, mostly. Oh. <laughs> that 12 bucks a month is harder to scrape up than old chewing gum. <laughs> well, it's nice transportation, anyhow, if you can stand it. Yep, me and Bessie wheeled into a filling station the other day on my motorcycle, kids. And I ordered my tires pumped up, headlight cleaned, a book of matches, drink of water, two road maps, and the goggles wiped. <laughs> then I turns to Bessie and I says, Bessie, I says! Here I am, O.T. <laughs> So fast. Hello, y'all. Well, hello, Bessie. Hi, Bess. Well, I gotta get busy and get this. Sit right down there on the steps, baby. Do your little footsies hurt? Oh, something awful, O.T. I got a corn crop that should happen to Kansas. Are those new shoes, Bessie? That's it, I guess. I just don't understand how leather can be so hard on your feet. When it's so soft on a cow. <laughs> well, I told you them heels was too high for you, Bessie. Makes you walk like a hamstrung moose. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> oh, you stop your 
teasing me, oh, gee, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, well, you really should have comfortable shoes if you walk much, Bessie. You ought to try Cuban heel next time. Oh, don't mention Cuban heels to Bessie, daughter. She had a terrible experience one time. You see, I'll, I'll, just... I'll tell it, O.T., I'll tell it. Let me tell it. <laughs> Oh, you'll never tell it right, Bessie. Bessie gets things kind of mixed up, kids. You see what happened now? It the... happened to me, O.T. Uh, I want to tell it. I'm the one that it... I was going to say that the... Oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Gee whiz, take it easy, chillin'. My gosh, let's start over. Now, you had a bad experience, Bessie. Yes, I did. With a Cuban heel. A Cuban heel. He was from Havana. <laughs> and he, he proposed to me, but he ran off with my sister and my postal savings. The scoundrel. He must have been a cad and a bounder, Bessie. Don't know about the cad, Johnny, but he sure was a bounder. Yeah. When Bessie's papa shot at him, he bounded clean over a barn and two silos. <laughs> Spin me, baby. Three silos, O.T. <laughs> when him and my sister and my postal savings left together, there was... Oh, a... I sure'd like to meet up with a dirty dog, Bessie. I'd show him. Oh, you're so masterful, O.T. What would you do, challenge him to a duel to see which one gets my hand? I sure would, baby. The hand with the postal savings in it. <laughs> Let's go now, baby. Okay, nature boy. Ta-ta, you are. So long, baby. Billy Mills, the orchestra. Now that I need you. you put on that inner tube already, dearie. Yeah. And I must say that for you, you've been very patient about it. <laughs> Ordinarily, you'd have been kicking it around the living room, screaming with rage. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dear, there's no use losing one's temper. Let me pump her up a little more here. There, there we are. All set. There, I got her. Got her patched tighter than a pack mule's girdle. <laughs> have you? You betcha. When I do a job, I... <laughs> oh, what do you know? Another leak. <laughs> Hand me the tire patches again, love boat. I'll fix this thing if it takes me to. Come in. Oh, 
it's Ollie, the janitor, McGee. Come in, Ollie. Right, thanks, Messrs. Hello, McGee. Hey, that smells like burning rubber in there. <laughs> That's burning rubber, Ollie. I was writing a letter to Santa Claus, and I made so many mistakes, my eraser caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he's just kidding, Ollie. He bought a bargain sale inner tube, and he's had to patch it four times. Well, the bargains ain't always bargains, Mrs. I got my wife at a clearance sale. <laughs> you what? You got your wife at a clearance sale. Oh, oh, don't misunderstood me. She wasn't for sale. She was working as a clerk, and I went in to buy some vendor underwear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a romantic little setting. Cupid slugs you right in the red flannels, eh, Ollie? <laughs> well, what happened, Ollie? Well, in the first place, Mrs., they weren't red flannels. They was purple. Purple? Purple? Well, how gaudy. Eighty-nine cents a pair they was. And I says to my wife, only she wasn't my wife then, she was used to clerk. Mm -hmm. I says, was this a good bargain? And she says in a whisper, she says, use between me and you, mister, don't took them. <laughs> Why not, I says. Eighty-nine cents is a very cheap price. And she says they wouldn't wash good. We call them our shrinking violets. <laughs> That's a very friendly gesture, I'd say. However, if you're going to have a romance with winter underwear, you might as well start from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose you thought if uh, she was that honest with a customer, Ollie, she'd make you a good wife, huh? Well, no, missus, not exactly. I used to think this kid knows more about washing than selling. Where do I got to sell? Nothing. Where do I got to wash? Plenty. <laughs> so I say, what time you got through work tonight? And she says, six o'clock. That was a mistake, too. Why was it? Because we got married, and now she is never through work. Oh, I... But if you get good marriage, you don't mind you donating your time. Give her <laughs> Go on, now. Isn't Ollie sweet, McGee? Well, sweet ain't exactly the word I'd use, kiddo, but he's a good, solid fella. Weighs 213 with a shovel full of coal. <laughs> hey, the next time I fall for a bargain inner tube like this, I, I'll know better, you know. Did I ever tell you about the time I and Charlie Hatch had the tire trouble? Often. Well, then I'll tell it again just to entertain myself. I'm easy amused. <laughs> you see, I and Hatch had a flat tire, see, and yeah. no patches. So I says, let's match and see who walks back to buy a patch, Hatch. So I match his hatch for the patch, and Hatch loses the match, Natch, and had to go get the patch, see? I says, better get a batch of patches, Hatch, because, Hatch, because if we scratch a patch and have to patch the scratches, Hatch, the back is have to... Hi, Wally. Hi, pal. Point killer. <laughs> <laughs> Killing the point in this case was justifiable homicide, dearie. Yes, Hello, I... Mr. Wilcox. Ah, uh, just passing by, and I thought I'd... Well, what's the interesting odor? Just patching an inner tube, Junior. Oh. I bought one at Kramer's drugstore that's about as airtight as a birdcage. <laughs> oh, my, but this is the last patch. Well, we hope. Well, same thing happened to me. I was out for a drive in the country Monday and had a blowout about 40 miles out of town, so when out I got out... for a drive on a working day, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, I had to get out for a while, Molly. I was just worn out. We'd had such a rush of business since we announced our new self-polishing water repellent, Glocal. There he goes. Look at that, Molly. A throw to first base from way out in left field on the first... Well, place. anyway, anyway. <laughs> anyway, there I was, 33 miles from town. You said 40. Oh, by that time, I'd walked back seven miles. Oh. <laughs> then I, I came to a farmhouse. I knocked. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. No answer. Boom. I walked to the back of the house. And there in the kitchen was a woman mopping the floor with water. Well, what would she be mopping it with? Maple syrup? <laughs> Certainly not. Water's all right to mop your hardwood and linoleum floors with if they're protected with Johnson's self-polishing water repellent, glow coat. That's right, because the new glow coat stays on and stays bright, and the water and the spilled things wipe up without leaving any dull streaks at all. Exactly. So I asked the woman if her linoleum was protected with the new water repellent glow coat. So she threw the mop at you and told you not to be so nosy. <laughs> No, she said it was, and why was I asking? I told her I represented the Johnson's Wax people, and that's as far as I got. Why? She grabbed me by the hand, took me in, fed me some apple pie, introduced me to Max. Max who? No last name, pal. He was a sheepdog. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it seems that old Max, for ten years, had been tracking in snow and rain and mud over her kitchen floor. But now, it didn't matter. Oh. Because with Johnson's water-repellent glow coat, spots and dirt wipe up without leaving any dingy places. 
It stays on. It stays bright. Yeah. You don't mop off that brilliant wax protective coating. Yeah. She said it was so sensational, so revolutionary, so terrific. So, 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 so. Hey, wait a minute, Waxy. Yes, pal? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm interfering with your work. Anything I can do to help you with that tire patch, pal? Yes. What? Yes. Go home? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes think you're very rude to Mr. Wilcox. Ah, oh, that's all right, kiddo. Like most successful salesmen, he's got an insult repellent skin. <laughs> well, I guess this does it. All set? Yeah. I Again? Got it. Yeah. You see? Look at it. So round, so firm, so fully patched. I knew I'd eventually. Listen to that. It mm. still leaks. How could Mr. Kramer stick you with such a shoddy piece of merchandise? That's ridiculous. By George! Uh, I... <laughs> now, take it easy, Snooky. It's all in a lifetime. Just a little leak in a little inner tube. Nothing serious. My gosh, I think this is fun. <laughs> well, as the lady told her husband when he got lost in Arizona, you have an odd sense of humor. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> I hope this is Mr. Kramer. I'll give him a piece of my mind with hairpins in it. Come in. Hey, it's the mayor. Hi, Latrivia. Come in, Your Honor. Come in. Hello, Molly. Hello, McGee. Am I interrupting some work? No, I'm just playing around patching a cheap inner tube, Latrivia. Glad to lay it down a minute. I'll be glad if you lay it down forever. <laughs> the way it smells in here, I feel like I'd been living in a hot water bottle. <laughs> Too cold to work in the garage, I suppose. Cold? You said it, Latrivia. I had my radio on in the car out there, and three mule trains froze to death. <laughs> uh, did you get that inner tube at Kramer's bargain sale? Yep, me and Mort Toops, Nal Weingand, and Charlie Goldring, and Hal Bach, we all bought them. Bunch of bargain hunters, I guess. Yes, yes, birds of a feather flock together. They do? Where'd you see them, trip? The season is still open. Let's go get some. Hey, Molly, get my shotgun. No, 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 no. We're not going hunting. I didn't say anything You said about... they were flocking together, Latriv. And that's the way I like them, together. Never could hit them unless they got bunched up. Make us some hot coffee in the trip, Molly. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 please. What please. do you mean, wait? You want somebody else to knock them all off? Let's get going. Going where? Going where? I... I'm not going hunting. Huh? When I said that birds of a feather flock together, I was just... Oh, Mr. It. Mayor, you were just the bearer of the best news McGee has had for a long time. Yeah. You know, Oh, his trigger finger has been itching ever since the duck season opened. You betcha. Where are we going, Latrib? Where'd you see him? Where'd you see him? Please, I didn't see them. Listen, will you? Please? <laughs> okay. Clam up, Molly. Big deal. <laughs> now then, when I said that birds of a feather flock together, I was not referring to any actual birds. Hmm? I was referring to you bargain hunters. You and Mort Toops and Al Wine. You mean we gotta cut all them guys in on this hunting trip? Oh, no, you don't. We sell it all to these ducks ourselves, legitimate. And they got no right to muscle in. I wasn't suggesting we duck them all in the feather hunt. I mean, when I said flocks of a bird are hunt for bargains, you uh, birds of a feather flock for Kramer's you said duckers, bird frames, lost! Please, oh. please, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Now, if you two boys get all upset like this, you'll never get any ducks. I... Relax. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> She's right, Latriv. Now, take a deep breath full of burnt rubber on account of I've been patching tires. <laughs> and tell me where you saw all these ducks. <laughs> the wide irrigation ditch out north past the airport? Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> remember the little cemetery just west of it? Little cemetery? I don't remember that cemetery. You don't remember? Oh, how silly of me. Of course you don't. There's only one grave in it. Just one? Yes. Yes, an open one. I'm having the headstone made tomorrow. Have you a middle initial, McGee? <laughs> Gee, Latrivia. Thank you. Fibba G. McGee. <laughs> that helps a lot. Good day. You know something? I don't...
don't think I'd better go anywhere with that guy with loaded shotguns. Oh, well, hand me the patches again, kiddo. Let's get back to work. Now, let's see. Ahead. The King's Men and 22 more shopping days till Christmas. Only 22 shopping days till Christmas. Still have lots of time. I've decided to skip this year. I won't spend a dime. Only 22 shopping days till Christmas. Gee, that's not so long. I'm just sending out cards this year. Then I can't go wrong. I'll have to buy one little present for Aunt Sarah. That can wait a while. Lots of time to choose. What have I got to lose? Still got 20 more shopping days till Christmas. Gee, but it's a four. Let's see. Two weeks has not been. Still got plenty more. Take your time. Take your time. What's the rush about? Stop that hurry and stop that worry and hurry and worry is out. All you gotta do is make out a list, decide upon the price to pay. All the dither and the bother and the lather and the bother will be done before Christmas Day. Trust me, I'll be ready then. Don't tell me that so Santa Claus coming again. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yikes! Only five more shopping days till Christmas, better go buy a tree. Must get Mama that new fur coat, she'll be mad at me. Only three more shopping days till Christmas, lots of things to buy. Should have started weeks ago, how the time to fly. Almost forgot to get that streamlined train for Junior. Where's my shopping list? Molly and Tony and Michael and Chris, a dolly, a pony, a cycle, a sled. Hear me calling Santa Claus, I need your help because there's only one little shopping day till Christmas. Now it's almost here. That old feeling that's in your mind comes to stealing up here inside. Now I'm sorry that Christmas time come but once a year. I did my Christmas shopping early. I got it this time, Molly. I got it whipped. This inner tube is tighter than a ballet dancer's pants. Well, good. You've only got about four dollars worth of patches on that dollar nineteen tube, you know. Yep, but look at that tube, Tootsie. Good as new. Better, in fact, because it's twice as thick now as it was before I put the patches on. <laughs> McGee, what are you listening to? No, don't tell me. I hear it. <laughs> oh, good gracious me. This is a little discouraging, isn't it? Yes, it is, dearie. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'd take that thing and I'd... Come in. Well, Dr. Gamble, do come in. Thank you, Molly, and good day to you, Butterfingers. <laughs> well, bless my soul if it isn't the grand exalted patron of the Butcher's Union. <laughs> Did you hear about Doc's new racket, Molly? He gets a cut on every patient that comes in the hospital. Oh, now, McGee. Your jokes, loudmouth, are almost as foul as the air in here. <laughs> what are you running today, a smelter? <laughs> well, if you accent the first syllable, doctor, yes, he is. I'm patching a tire tube, Tubby. Bought one of those no-bargain inner tubes with the built-in leak from Kramer's Drugstore. <laughs> he hasn't been hissed at so much, doctor, since he did his magic act at the Elk Smoker. <laughs> Well, he should do a very good job with that tube, Molly. It takes a flat tire to fix a flat tire. I'll... Oh, yeah? Uh -huh. If I had that spare you carry around your middle balloon boy, I could throw this tube away. <laughs> Furthermore, you big encyclopediatrician. Wait a minute. Big what? Encyclopediatrician, a guy that doctors children out of a set of books. <laughs> Only you'd do better if you knew how to read. Oh, now, McGee, that's ridiculous. Oh, Why, Dr. Gamble can read almost anything. He can even read his own prescriptions, can't you, Doctor? Certainly. Some of them. <laughs> you just concentrate on the tire, dearie. Have you any more patches out in the car? I'm sure, I got more patches in the room here, but I got no more room here for patches. <laughs> Unless I can squeeze one more on right here. Yeah, there. 
That ought to get it. That's, That's it. a very handsome job, slob. Thanks. <laughs> Watching your hands at work there reminds me of myself when I did my first operation. <laughs> you ever watch him operate, Molly? No, but I've heard He that goes he... after a tonsil like a fullback after a fumble. <laughs> His hospital saves plenty of dough on anesthetics because when the patient gets a look at the gamble, he faints dead away and they operate before he comes to. That's the dirty... <laughs> McGee, you know that's a dirty slander. Yeah. My hospital... Uh, I... I can't engage in any further discussions now, Doctor. I've work to do. <laughs> I'm a busy boy, boy. Busy as a beaver. Huh. Between you and a beaver, Sonny, there is one large difference. Yeah, what? A beaver has a flat tail. So long, oh. Molly. <laughs> Hey, look, Molly, this did it, kiddo. I stopped the leak. The tube was fixed. Well, Mother's proud of you, dearie. The last patch, too. Yep. Oh, I've learned something this time, kiddo. You betcha. Old Take It Easy McGee, the soul of patience. From now on, my temper is going to be as steady as a... as a... as a... Oh, no. It can't be. Oh, dear, now this This is... is the end. This rotten, dirty, chiseling, leaky tube. Give me them scissors. Here, dearie, take the butcher knife. That's better. Thanks. I'll cut this dead rat as loud as you can. Oh, now, I'll beat the bajunior out of it. Oh. That's dead rat Now, don't scratch the table. That's the boy. Hit it good. Take that. And that. You dirty, cheesy, cheap chunk of imitation. Get junk. the wastebasket. There. That's that. Whew. Let me sit down a minute. Hi, uh, right, George, I... Oh, my gosh. Listen. What on earth is... I cut it to ribbons and still it hisses at me. <laughs> Where's our next? Get me some dynamite. McGee. Huh? Well, I, I, I guess I should have mentioned this before, but, well, I just forgot. Forgot? Forgot what? Well, it was so cold this morning, huh? I... I turned on the steam in the radiator. What? You mean... You mean none of them leaks was leaked? Well, I guess not. Oh, this is ridiculous. Fibber and Molly return in a moment. Remember what I told you at the beginning of this broadcast? If you are using a floor wax that won't stand water, you're not getting your money's worth. So be sure to use Johnson's new glow coat. It's the self-polishing floor wax that is positively water repellent. Johnson's new glow coat is already on your dealer's shelves. It's in the regular glow coat package. In fact, there is no change at all in the container, but there's a wonderful change inside. Try it and see. Ask for glow coat tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a season for bad driving conditions. Over some of them, we have no control. But we can drive carefully and be sure our cars are working properly. The figures for traffic fatalities are pretty appalling. Remember, it's better to be a live driver or pedestrian than a dead statistic. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Here's a way to keep your furniture shining bright all through the holiday season and still have more time to yourself for Christmas shopping. Keep your furniture clean and shining with far less work. Use Johnson's Cream Wax, the fastest wax furniture polish money can buy. Johnson's Cream Wax cleans so quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly that using it is almost as easy as dusting. A few strokes with a cloth does the cleaning. A few more bring out a satin smooth polish. And Johnson's Cream Wax contains no sticky oils to catch dust. Tomorrow, start using the fastest wax furniture polish money can buy. Get Johnson's Cream Wax at your dealer's.
stay tuned for Big Town coming to you next on NBC.